Hello everybody, I'm Sandra Otten with ReasonableDiet.com and bringing you Winter Squash 101 Part 2 where I am making a soup from winter squash. If you missed the first video, what we did was we roasted winter squash. We roasted a, actually I ended up roasting a pumpkin, an acorn squash, a butternut squash, a um, spaghetti squash, and a carnival squash. This was the acorn squash right here. And I've already made one soup from it, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. And then I'm going to actually make another soup with some more of it that I have. So the first soup that I made, I had a broth that I used that I had previously made. Now, I don't have any defrosted right now, so I decided to use water instead of broth in it, um, which is a little bit risky because obviously the... Uh, broth brings more flavor to it, but instead of using a broth, I'm going to quickly saute some onion and red pepper that I have cut up, and I'm going to use some olive oil to do that. So I've got my olive oil here, and I have my little tablespoon because you know I never drizzle olive oil because it's just a bad habit to get into. One tablespoon, half a cup, starts all looking the same when you're drizzling. <laughs> So even though I don't have a recipe that says I have to use a tablespoon, I always start with that just because it seems like it's an adequate amount of it. We've got my um, burner already heated up there, so I'm going to go ahead and give that just a second, and then I'm going to put that in. And I'm also going to tell you that um, when I roasted my vegetables before, I roasted them in a roasting pan, my um, squash. I just cut them in half, took the seeds and pulp out, put them in the roasting pan, sprayed them with olive oil. And for the ones I was gonna eat plain, I spiced them with turmeric, cinnamon, and uh, a little bit of nutmeg. And it was delicious, it was wonderful. I also ate spaghetti squash with a butternut squash mix, just by itself, no spices on it at all, salt, salt, and pepper, it was wonderful. Um, I taste tested these, and I will have to say that the, uh, egg, the butternut squash is still my favorite, just a little bit sweeter than the other ones. Spaghetti squash has more water in it. It's a little blander, um, but they're all pretty much interchangeable in recipes. Spaghetti squash has a little bit different texture than the rest of them, but for the most part, when you're making most recipes, most um, innovative things, just intuitive cooking that you're doing in your kitchen, you can substitute any of the winter squashes for any of the other winter squashes. And when you are roasting them, I did it at 400 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes until it's fork tender like you would want a sweet potato if you were just eating it. That's the kind of tenderness that you want. And I do put a little bit of water in the bottom of the pan so it doesn't scorch the bottom of the squash. Won't hurt it that much. It'll just discolor it a little bit. You can see that some of this squash is discolored a little bit. That's just from where it was um, at the bottom of the pan without water. So something I had forgot to do earlier, but I'm reminding you so that you don't forget. Okay, so now we've got this, oh, got our oil a little too hot there. That's what happens when I get to talking. All right, I'm gonna let that cool down now just a second so I don't burn those onions and peppers. And what else am I gonna do? Okay, I will get to loading this food processor up. So I've already got four cups, nope, not quite four. So I'm gonna finish this acorn squash here and get that in there. And uh, both soup recipes that I'm making call for four cups of winter squash. Easy enough, right? Very easy. And as I said, inexpensive and helpful. Cheap, fast, good for you, calorie-wise, good. All right, so now we have about four cups of squash. What I'm going to do is get some of that in my food processor. And then, normally, in my other recipe, I mixed that with the broth and got it all blended up. In this case, I'm going to be mixing it with water, since I don't have broth. So here's a cup of water. And we're going to get four cups of water in there total and get all of this blended up. There's mine. There it is. There we go. That's as long as you need to blend that if you have a good food processor. And then it's 
going straight into my crock pot. Now you could do this on your stove and just simmer it on low for about an hour. I'm going to put it in the crock pot for about three hours and then leave it on warm for a little while after that. Onions going, as I said, I spiced the last soup with just straight red curry powder. But this one, I'm using onions and a red pepper. And I'm also going to use turmeric, cinnamon, and nutmeg. So if you didn't have an onion and a pepper, you could use some garlic, you could use some parsley, you could use chives, you could use anything to just give it a little extra kick of flavor, right? All right, this is going my crock pot. More squash. This time I'm just going to go ahead and put the onions and the flavored onions and peppers in there. Now, I'm going to cut the camera in just a second so you don't have to listen to the whole food processor deal here, but I'm going to get all of this blended with the water, and then I'm going to get this can of coconut milk in there also, and I'm going to blend it up. Last time, I just used the whisk, and it still had a few little chunks in it, not that big a deal, but this time I am just going to go ahead and blend it in the food processor. Now, the thing that I want to tell you about coconut milk is I'm using unsweetened coconut milk but not the light variety, because I found out that the light variety, all it is is watered down. So hello, welcome back. I'm Sandra Auten, again, with ReasonableDiet.com, finishing off my pumpkin soup. I told you I was going to have it all blended and in the um, crock pot already, but actually I waited because I wanted to make sure that I told you about the red curry paste, which is the key ingredient here. So basically the ingredients are water, squash, broth, coconut milk, curry paste, salt, and pepper. I don't think I'm forgetting anything this time. But the curry paste is a key variable because how much curry paste do you put in it depends entirely on what your taste is, right? So when I made it last, I um, used uh, five tablespoons of curry paste had the broth flavoring with it, but that didn't have a lot of kick to it, but it had a lot of seasoning in it. Um, so I'm going to have um, my husband come on and taste the soup that I made earlier. I've warmed some up here. Bring your spoon with you, Kevin. Oh, you got your spoon. <laughs> Good. Kevin's got a very special spoon. Always have a special spoon. <laughs> That's right. And so this is the recipe that I've just put together, and I had five tablespoons of curry paste in it. So you tell me what you think about... Uh... Oh, mind you, Kevin likes his spiciness. Hmm. That's a little after kick. Yeah. I like so, it that way. Yeah. So for you, it would be good. That's mm -hmm. what I thought when I tasted it. It's perfect for you, but for like the average person, if I'm the average person, I can stand stuff kind of spicy, but mm -hmm. not too. Mm -hmm. So I would say go down just like a tablespoon or two, wouldn't you, for the average person? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, you can even eat food in Thailand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I could have, I could have, eat it a little hotter. Could you? Yeah, but it's actually delicious as it is. Yeah, it is good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah one of your favorite combos, the whole coconut milk with <laughs> curry paste. So, mm -hmm. all right. So I'm going to finish making this soup. Thank you, Kevin, mm -hmm. <laughs> for your input. Um, and make sure that you have the recipes for those. And I hope you'll be able to watch video one where I roast the vegetables and video three where I um, make a quick stir fry of the uh of the squash with vegetables and shrimp hoping for peace in the world wishing you peace of mind namaste